An Asian bull elephant called Kavan is in his 35th year of trauma in Islamabad Zoo, living alone in appalling conditions. He constantly bobs his head and sways, a sign of mental illness. It is very distressful to me. You just don't see that in the wild, ever. Yet continued calls for his release fall on deaf ears. At the other side of the world, an almost identical scene plays out. Billy has been locked up here for 30 years. It's time he goes to sanctuary. Asian bull elephant Billy, taken from the wild as a baby, also displays psychotic behavior. Once again, protests over many years are rejected by the zoo. Elephants in the wild are facing extinction. Millions of people in Los Angeles come to the zoo to experience Billy up close. But in Pakistan, things are about to change dramatically for Kavan. The global superstar share adds to the pressure for his release. And a judge rules that the Islamabad Zoo must be closed for mistreating its animals. Within months, Kavan is beginning his journey to freedom. So he's a ray of hope for me and a lot of other people who are trying to fight for animal rights, not only in Pakistan, but also all over the world. But there is no reprieve for Billy. Despite his case also going through the courts, he remains in captivity. Kavan's free, Billy's not. The Pakistan Supreme Court freed Kavan. The California Supreme Court refused to free Billy. It's pretty upsetting. After more than 35 years in captivity, Gavan, dubbed the world's loneliest elephant, becomes the world's luckiest elephant. With the zoo ordered to close, an international team of experts is assembled in record time by animal charities. Led by vet Amir Khalil, they face the huge, urgent task of safely transporting the five-ton elephant to a sanctuary, two and a half thousand miles away in Cambodia. It was a logistic challenge, a lot of responsibility on the shoulder of the team and myself. Next up? No, no. We have enough. And... One of the main things we needed to be done here is the preparation of the elephant to fly. How to take about 200 liter water to bring it in front of him that he can drink. An elephant needs about 250 kilogram food. Oh, apple? Okay. How to keep his attention. If there is emergency, can we stop everything or we should sedate him? Because a D-Day is a D-Day. A mission has to be done. emotional time um, when it comes to Kavan because we've grown up with him. To actually see him be free and be happy. I'm, I'm gonna keep praying that you know it goes smoothly and you know he just gets to be where he belongs. I become to be touched to the animal. From tomorrow he will be an elephant which I wished for him. They'll never know just who you are, but they can turn your bright star dark. 
They'll try to hold your spirit down Couldn't do it then, can't do it now They'll try to tell you who to be But they can't change the way you feel After Kavan's seven-hour flight, Cher is among those greeting him at the airport. Kavan is heading to the stunning Cambodia Wildlife Sanctuary, set in thick forest in the northwest of the country. I'm very, of course, excited for Kavan to come and be here with us. He's a beautiful bull. He's experienced many things that caused him great harm and suffering mentally. As for him to come here is, is going to be very good. As night falls, Kavan's marathon journey to freedom finally comes to a successful end. Initially, Kavan will acclimatize and learn to fend for himself in a smaller enclosure. But for the first time in eight years, he's able to touch another elephant. He did go through a lot of pain. I know it from if I happen to startle him accidentally, he recoils in fear. He shies back and just his eyes close and sh shudder, and uh, he's uh, awaiting harm. And that breaks my heart to know, because I know exactly what he's gone through. Despite this, within just a few days, there's an extraordinary change. After 30 years of stereotypical behavior, Kavan's head bobbing and swaying have stopped almost completely. A great surprise even to Asian elephant experts like Lek Chilet, who runs her own sanctuary in neighboring Thailand. When Kawan moved from Islamabad Zoo to uh, Cambodia Wildlife Sanctuary, no one ever expect that Kawan totally he changed attitude. We never thought that this Kawan will be trust the environment, but just only very short time he can adjust well and he know that it's a safe place. In a few months' time, Kavan will move into a huge forested area where he'll be able to fully interact with other elephants of the sanctuary. Cambodia Wildlife Sanctuary is a place where he can become a bull elephant again. And uh, I want to give everything that he, he deserves to him. You In Los Angeles, Billy's ordeal continues. And this, despite more than 20 years of campaigns and 10 years of legal battles. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Free Billy Rally. The success of Kavan's case prompts campaigners to make one last push to persuade the zoo to let Billy go free. Thank you very much. The song is called Free Billy, Where the Elephants Roam. Now, as every activist here knows, Billy is a prisoner in the zoo. Where the elephants roam Somewhere I've never known If they are displaying behavior and natural behavior, then that's the time and point when we need to stand in and be their voice and intervene. And that's why I'm here. And when the elephants run. I saw Billy about 30 years ago in the days when I did take my children to the zoo. That's what we did. We didn't know there was anything wrong with the zoo. And then when I learned after seeing wild elephants in Africa, I saw so this is not how elephants should live. I've come here today because it's time we right our wrongs. We know Billy can thrive 
and he can have the most beautiful life if he is let go to sanctuary. Year after year for the children to stay. My name is Robin Chorna and I'm 13 years old. I would rather Billy be as happy as possible than for kids like me to get to stare at him. We're smart enough to learn about elephants in other ways. The whole point is to make sure that we do right by these animals, particularly those that we've imprisoned for all this time. Among the speakers, LA-based trial lawyer David Castleman, co-founder of the Cambodia Wildlife Sanctuary, who helped engineer Kavan's journey to freedom. Moving Kavan there at an age where he can actually have a real life was pretty fulfilling. And it dawned on me that we could do that for Billy. And I thought about it before, but I didn't have proof. Now I have proof because it's quite a complex thing. Outside LA Zoo, David reveals an extraordinary offer. I'm here to tell the city council and all of you, we're willing to take him to the Cambodia sanctuary, just like Havan, back in his native land with a bull elephant of the same age and lush jungle where he can live his life in peace. Up to now, the zoo's always stuck to his guns, insisting Billy has a great life in captivity. It's how you care for the animals, which is the important thing. And I think here, we care so well for these animals. Someone like Billy gets extremely good care. We, I mean, in, I know I love, I love him dearly. We do everything we can to meet all of his needs and to keep him as a quote unquote happy elephant. But the zoo's own research shows Billy spends around half his time exhibiting stereotypical behavior rooted to the spot, swaying and bobbing his head. Also known as zoocotic behavior, the world's top elephant experts are in no doubt what it represents. Science it tells us that they exhibit behavioral stereotypes, abnormal behaviors like swaying back and forth, uh, bobbing the head, those kinds of things. And those stereotypes tell us that there is an impact of the zoo environment on their brains. It's the same kind of thing you see for people in mental health care. Other animals who are kept in zoos and in labs, this is this is not a mystery. We know exactly what the mechanism is. We never see stereotypic behavior in the wild. None of that head bobbing that Billy does. You just don't see that in the wild, ever. Imagine an elephant every day wakes up in the morning and thinks, you know, okay, where are we gonna go today? They, they discuss that. They communicate about that. One elephant will propose, I want to go this way, let's go together. They can, they can negotiate, they can disagree. What can an elephant in a zoo do? Just the same thing every day. Nowhere to go, nothing to do, no one to see. <laughs> so this stereotypic behavior, the rocking back and forth, the stepping forward and backward, a lot of it I think has to do with, you know, just that, that need to move. Footage of Billy gathered over the years in LA Zoo paints a tragic picture of the lack of stimulation in his life. Los Angeles Zoo turned down our request to be interviewed for this documentary, but we can get a good sense of their views from the transcripts of a major legal case accusing the zoo of mistreating Billy. It came to the LA court in 2012. Waiving all legal fees, the attorney for the plaintiffs was David Castleman. And among the witnesses for the defense was Victoria Guanet, LA Zoo senior elephant keeper. As with other witnesses, her words are spoken by an actor. What's your understanding regarding Billy bobbing his head? It's an indication that Billy is happy, and it's a comfort, like a dog wagging its tail for comfort and happiness. Miss Guarnett produced no evidence for this theory. In fact, 
the head researcher for the LA Zoo, Dr. Cox, told you otherwise, did she not? Yes, I've had Dr. Cox tell me that it's a condition of boredom and nervousness and unhappiness. Yet five years after the legal case, the then zoo director, John Lewis, still maintained there was nothing negative about Billy's stereotypical behavior. Billy displays the head bobbing behavior when he is aware he will be fed soon. He uses the bobbing in anticipation of his keepers when he knows it's time to get fed. A sign currently on prominent display beside the elephant enclosure is no less misleading. It reads, in zoos, males are often by themselves because that's how they would live in the wild. Another point put to senior elephant keeper Victoria Guarnet at the trial. You believe that's normal, that's healthy for a male elephant, because your understanding is that they're solitary in the wild, true? The big, the breeding bull, yes. In fact, you never heard otherwise. No one has ever told you otherwise. I'm going to say okay. Male elephants are not on their own in the wild, um, except for, you know, short periods of time. Males grow up in the family unit and they interact with the other animals and participate in family life. But as they get to be about eight years old and so on, they start to spend more and more time further away from their mother than, say, a, a female of the same age. And by around 14 years old, they leave their family. But they don't just wander off on their own. Most often they join other families that have males of their own age and they hang out together in little teenage groups. But eventually when they're in their late teens, early 20s, males start coming into must. That's a period of heightened sexual and aggressive activity. They spend more time on their own, say when they're searching for females. But still, it's only about a third of their time, even as large adult males, that they would spend alone. The judge in the legal case was amazed the keeper Victoria Guarnet did not know any of this. For someone with the title Senior Elephant Keeper, Ms. Guarnet had some surprising misconceptions. The most credible testimony was from Dr. Joyce Poole, one of the world's leading experts on elephant behavior. That Ms. Guarnet believes stereotypic behavior is an expression of contentment appears to be part of her anthropomorphic fantasy that the elephants are happy to see her and live their lives in captivity. Adult males like Billy come into their heightened state of must every year, making it especially cruel and dangerous to keep them in an enclosed space. They're stuffed with food, mostly not very interesting food, get fat and stay in must the whole time. So here is this male with surging testosterone and nowhere to take it, nothing to do, just going a bit crazy. Thai Sanctuary founder Lek Chilot has been monitoring Billy for the past decade. She was shocked, but not surprised, by recent footage of Billy filmed at the zoo. After I check for the condition of Billy, what is I have seen here is he show a lot of mental, a swaying head. He really lost his spirit. He walk quite slow. Uh, his skin is not in a good health. It's not like a normal bull who stay in the jungle. A zoo environment can never reach uh, the point where it can stimulate an elephant enough for that elephant to thrive. You cannot make a cage or a display interesting enough, large enough, and you cannot have a social group in a zoo complex enough to meet the psychological needs of an elephant. Even if you wanted to, 
you literally uh, could not. All the elephants deserve to get the uh, Aryan uh, freedom. Billy have been in the zoo for a long time, and as well, these elephants, they stay captivity and for entertainment, for elephant show, elephant circus, and elephant riding. They're not different from Billy. So we still give chance for them uh, to let them have a freedom life. And yes, every elephant deserves that. And look at this baby. They are so happy. Now they completely roam free and they do whatever they want and they become the elephant. I often have said that imagine what it's like to, you know, live in your bathroom for <laughs> For years on end or to be cooped up in one room in your house. Certainly some zoos are pretty much like that for elephants. It's a bit depressing really and uh, it's very lonely. Yeah. When Covid struck, the Born Free Animal Charity commissioned an animation using actual recordings of people's experiences during lockdown. It was really driven by the pandemic. It was because we've all been, to a lesser or greater degree, locked away and have missed those things that we value so much. Freedom, choice, who we see, when we get up, when we go out. All those things we, as human beings, now perhaps empathised more profoundly with the plight of animals in zoos. It was just getting a little bit repetitive. Say the least, like every day being the same, not being able to, you know, just pop out and do something to, to make yourself feel a bit more normal. My patience has run a bit low. <laughs> you wonder just how much longer it's going on for, though, don't you? In 2009, 20 years after Billy's arrival as a four-year-old, Los Angeles Zoo is planning a long-term future in captivity for its elephants, spending $42 million on building a new elephant exhibit. We built this facility, which is state-of-the-art, because we wanted the elephants to be cared for properly and to live in a good environment. We wanted to make ours with hills, valleys, pools. We wanted it to be something where it's more like they're outside in the wild. To visitors, it looks like the elephants are in more natural surroundings, able to forage among trees and shrubs. Nothing could be further from the truth. See these trees here? Yes. Are they hot-wired? Yes. The grass around this area, it's hot-wired, isn't it? Yes. The entire perimeter is hot-wired, is it not? Yes. And inside, there's a whole series of areas that are hot-wired. True? Yes. When asked why the green areas were electrified, Victoria responded... Because there would be no more plants left in it. They would eat them all. Judge Siegel was not impressed. Rather than providing the elephants with trees to rub against and knock down as part of an enriched environment, that stimulates and elicits species-specific behavior. The Los Angeles Zoo Elephant Management System tempts the elephants, but frustrates them by keeping those trees in visual and sensory range, but beyond access behind electrically charged wires. Elephants of Asia is a six acre project uh, that includes nearly four acres for the elephants that are gonna reside here. It really takes a, a mega step, a giant step, towards the future management of elephants in North America. The then zoo director, John Lewis, 
described the new exhibit as having much more room for the elephants than the site it replaced. But at the trial, he was forced to admit this was yet another misleading claim. What you did by enlarging the area and simulating different looking environments is you provided a lot of area for the public with greenery and things to make it a better exhibit from the standpoint of a zoo, right? We provided for the public as well as the animals, yes. Comparing the space Billy was on before the new exhibit, for him as an individual, nothing much has really changed, has it? For him as an individual, no. We have the waterfall where they can shower and groom themselves. There's two deep pools where they can swim and relax. A lot was made by the zoo of the new water features. And to the average visitor, they look suitably impressive. Basic first principles evidence that something about a zoo environment doesn't cut it, doesn't work. So the people that work in zoos know this and they try to provide some form of enrichment. And most certainly, you know, is it better for Billy to have a place where he can get into the water and bathe? Sure, but that's not the question. The question is, is it enough? It may help a little bit and it may help temporarily, but it's not going to overcome what he really needs. It's perhaps telling that nowadays Billy largely ignores the waterfall and stands in the water, mindlessly rocking back and forth. City Administrative Officer, the Zoo Director and the City Engineer, uh, please uh, come to the center table and give a brief report to the Council on what is before us. Before the $42 million exhibit was built, the, the Zoo Director had to get it approved by the LA City Council. We'll just highlight a couple of things that I think are important for the Council to consider. A key part of John Lewis's pitch was that the exhibit would give the elephants significantly more room. He also had to report to the committee on the elephants' health. The elephants at the Los Angeles Zoo are getting excellent care. Just mention Gita for a minute as an example. There was a comment made that she had a terminal injury to her foot. Uh, Gita had an infected foot. Surgery was done on that foot by our veterinarians. They did a pretty radical surgery on her left foot. Um, that foot is essentially healed. Two months after this statement to the LA City Council, Gita tragically died in the zoo, aged just 48. At the trial, John Lewis admitted the zoo's negligence in Gita's death. Gita was spotted down at 9 p.m. and no one tried to get her up until five the next morning. That's not totally true. Gita was seen down and was reported by a security guard, but the next employee did not do what they were supposed to do. That resulted in Gita being down throughout the night. Foot problems are one of the main causes of premature death in captive elephants. The huge creatures are simply not built to stand still for long periods on hard ground. There are issues for elephants in a physical sense because they can't move the way they, they do in the wild. Um, and because they're forced to stay in a small area, you tend to develop all sorts of, of physical problems. There's the impacts on their joints. Um, they're, they're, the pads of their feet overgrow because they don't get worn down and that leads to fissures developing where infections start to grow. Elephants standing, for example, on wet concrete get foot rot. So they're standing in their own urine, they're standing in the, in the runoff from their own feces and they might be doing it for 12, 14 hours out of 24 and it, it absolutely starts to rot their feet. If you look at an elephant in, in captivity, most elephants have a problem with their gait. In other words, the way they move. You can see they've, they've got arthritis, they've got aches and pains. Whereas that is not common at all in the wild, even among elderly elephants. Praise LA Zoo has a very poor record when it comes to elephants. I mean, I 
am aware of at least 15 elephants, some say it's 17 elephants, that have died at the zoo in the past. And there's only been one calf born at the zoo, and that calf died as well. So, if I can put it rather crudely, the Los Angeles Zoo would appear to me at any rate to be a net consumer of elephants. To minimize potentially fatal cracks in the elephant's feet, the ground in their enclosure must be kept soft. But it emerged at the trial that critical advice to till the rock-hard sand and soil was simply ignored. The advice was given by the zoo's own chief vet, Dr. Curtis Eng. Shockingly, Dr. Eng testified that keepers have told him that they regularly rototill the soil in the exhibit when in fact the opposite is true. It is undisputed that the elephant keepers in the Los Angeles Zoo do not rototill the surface of the exhibit and never have, not once. It is this kind of testimony, again offered by defendants, that makes one wonder whether the keepers and medical staff are working in the same zoo. Some in the Los Angeles City Council are also becoming increasingly aware that zoo officials are not being straight with them. Well, the, the zoo, the city attorney's office, other entities that could have never reported to the city council members on the state of elephants uh, and their health uh, in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, if anything, the former zoo director has told us things that weren't true about how happy and healthy Billy was. And uh, there's not an effort to inform us because I think the better informed the council would be, the more likely they would be to encourage uh, our letting Billy out of the zoo. Billy was bought by LA Zoo when he was just four years old helping feed and sustain a terrible trade. Billy was caught from the wild in Malaysia. What does that actually mean? I mean, how do you capture an elephant from the wild? The only experience and evidence that I've had is that it's an, an extremely brutal activity. First of all, at the age of four, he's going to be living in a matriarchal group. We can relate to that as human beings. He's a four-year-old child, and to capture him, he will have been separated from his matriarchal group, which is almost certainly going to be a brutal procedure, and he's going to be uh, hauled off into uh, a crate. And then the elephant's spirit would be broken. There are some posts in the ground and the elephant is tied between the posts so that he or she cannot move. And then the living daylights are beaten out of the animal until the animal submits and cries for mercy. And once that's happened, the elephant's spirit is broken. That doesn't mean, however, that the elephant is now docile for the rest of his or her life. We all know the expression, an elephant never forgets. Well, these elephants have not forgotten what happened to them and have not forgotten the indignities and the abuse that they may have suffered in their lives in captivity. And that's why it is one of the most dangerous jobs in the world to be an elephant keeper. Shockingly, Billy's torture didn't end when he arrived at Los Angeles Zoo. Good. All right, hat's gone. All right, back up. In court, the plaintiffs showed a truly distressing video they had obtained of how four-year-old Billy was trained. You pick up one foot and you ask him to move forward. All right, come here and you say skip. Move up. All right, skip. Good. He's had a bull hook used on him. Uh, he was ridden, he was, you know, taught to raise his paws, and none of it in a kind way. They start defecating a lot, that's a good to some point. That shows that they're a little nervous, but it also makes it a little slippery back there. So they're 
feet won't have the grip that they normally would have. So I'll go ahead and move him up. Move up. I got just a little bit more. Come here. At trial, we presented a video of him having all four of his legs pulled apart and being submissive on the ground, uh, almost similar to like a crush cage that they used to break an elephant's spirit. I right, come on down. And normally, we'll just start poking him on the back with just this little sharp object. It doesn't break the skin. And we'll just say, come on down. Take up the slack when you can. Move up. Move up. Good, steady. And you'll see him start to lay himself down. Come on down. When he gets that knee down, what I'll do is get this foot under him, which he's doing already, and that ensures that he comes this way and doesn't try to lie the other way. Steady. Good boy. When Billy gets fed at the zoo, <coughs> traditional crowd pleasers like his head shaking and trumpeting are a direct result of his brutal training. He's got no love for humans, I'm sure. You know, or certainly it's not deserved if he does. And we sit there and we look at him as a spectacle and we lie to all the children that see him. Good boy, all right. You make him lie down just like he was trained, don't you? I don't make him lie down. We ask him to stretch out. If he chooses not to, he will not. Do you know how Billy was trained to lie down? I was not with Billy when he was trained originally. So you're putting him through procedures and you don't know emotionally, psychologically, how he reached the point he's at, do you? I know that if he did not want to do it, he would not do it. Miss Gornett claims she does not know how Billy was trained to lie down as the keepers have him do for visitors to the Elephants of Asia exhibit. The court discredits this testimony. It is inconceivable that the senior elephant keeper of the Los Angeles Zoo has no knowledge of the kinds of things elephant trainers had to do to Billy and other elephants to train them to lie down on command. For someone who claims to love the elephants, it is shocking that she would command or at least assist them in performing an activity that the elephants were taught to do in this way. And it's not just about seeing him, it's about hearing him, it's about smelling him. That is what's gonna change people. I mean, he's an ambassador for his species. He, he's making connections, he's fostering um, our future conservationists. I mean, Billy himself is literally saving wild elephants. The claims of zoos and aquariums uh, that they have an educational purpose are empty. There is very little actual evidence to show that when a child goes to visit a zoo and sees an elephant on display swaying back and forth, in a small setup with maybe a couple of other elephants, that they come away with any real appreciation for who that animal is. And there's certainly no evidence that going to see an animal on display in a zoo makes you into a conservationist. And to tell you the truth, every single parent that takes their kids to a zoo are, in my opinion, are failing their kids because it's all a lie. And the fact that the zoo has to pay someone to stand there and say that his behavior is comfort behavior because he knows he's going to be fed, I mean, it's horrible. It's horrible, and it needs to come, it needs to, come to a close. It really does. I also think that what we teach children when we buy a ticket and give them a chance to go to a zoo or an aquarium is really not something we want to be teaching kids. We don't want them to think that it's okay to control nature. Some critics of keeping big mammals like Billy in captivity have less issue seeing smaller animals in zoos, especially those in family groups with relatively large natural areas to move about in. But Los Angeles Zoo has no plans to give up its flagship species.
there will be plenty of zoos who follow a traditional model, who believe that the public won't come unless they hold certain species, tigers, lions, elephants, rhino, giraffe, and they somehow feel that the public won't turn up and won't pay quite a lot of money nowadays to go to the zoo unless those species are on display. When people go to zoos, they don't really learn anything about what it's like to be an elephant. Any kind of media use, video, animatronics, anything that places the animal in context is really going to be a better educational experience for children. Amalgamated Dynamics is one of Hollywood's top animatronics companies. We don't have to imprison animals in order to experience them. There's a different way through science and technology that we can free these animals up, let the elephants roam, and create an experience for the viewer that is actually closer to reality than staring at a sad, poor, broken, imprisoned, innocent elephant. Get it to look a little bit more at the camera. Alec has been involved in creating incredibly realistic creatures for the big screen. In my career, my team has created dozens upon dozens of animatronic creatures and animals. Uh, some of our bigger creations have been, for instance, the Queen Alien in the Alien vs. Predator franchise. We've also created animals like gorillas and crocodiles, wolves, lions, things like that in the naturalistic world that are very, very convincing and very realistic. And he believes he can bring that expertise from the film world to a zoo setting. I think the advantage of an animatronic elephant would be that its behavior would more accurately show what the behavior of elephants in the wild. If you imagine an animatronic mother elephant and an animatronic baby elephant, you could potentially have these two robots interact through certain behaviors, intertwining their trunks, showing realistic loving behavior between a, a parent and a child. My goal would be but that you could potentially touch as well and could touch you with its trunk. If we were to say that the gorilla was very tired and he wanted to go to sleep, he might look like something like this. Think about dinosaurs. No child has ever met a dinosaur, but yet they love them, they want to protect them, and their entire experience with dinosaurs is through books, movies, and now animatronics. It tells you you do not need a live animal suffering for a child to be excited by that animal. In many of the zoos across the country, the health care costs of these elephants are really significant, just staggeringly high. My bet is that an animatronic elephant would be very much less costly than what they're currently putting into living elephants. It's an argument that even the LA Zoo director found hard to refute. In facilities that had elephant exhibits that have closed in the last few years, lifelike animatronic elephant exhibits could be educational. True? True. And you're aware that Hollywood experts could literally make life-size elephants which posture, move, and sound just like wild elephants, aren't you? I think they would be similar. They still wouldn't be alive. For now, Billy remains in L.A. Zoo, even though the judge's summary in the legal case against the zoo could not have been more damning. The Elephants of Asia exhibit at the Los Angeles Zoo is not a happy place for elephants, nor is it for members of the public who go to the zoo and recognize that the elephants are neither thriving, happy, nor content. Captivity is a terrible existence for any intelligent, self-aware species, which the undisputed evidence shows elephants are. 
to believe otherwise, as some high-ranking zoo employees appear to believe, is delusional. And the quality of life that Billy, Tina, and Jewel endure in their captivity is particularly poor. The case dragged on through the California courts for a decade, and it's hard for those involved to understand why it didn't result in Billy being released. That's a pretty horrific experience, actually. It's very demoralizing, because you, you go in and, and you win, and you have also, you know, there's a lot of people that follow what was happening, and you have a win and you feel really good about it, and, and nothing happens, and they, you know, there's an appeal process. You win the appeal process, and you keep going up and up and up. And so I don't understand how it came about and how amazing facts and, and proof of wrongdoing and standing and everything else just kind of got tossed to the wind. I feel like I'm still living through it because uh, although we won at every critical stage, uh, through the trial, which we won, to the first appeal, which we won, to the rehearing on the appeal, which we won. We ultimately lost in the Supreme Court on a technicality so minor that the word elephant or Billy was never even written into the opinion. It was totally unrelated to why we filed suit in the first place. And I live through it even now, and it's motivating me still to try and get Billy out. Unless the zoo itself has a change of heart, the only hope of a reprieve for Billy now rests on a vote of the Los Angeles City Council. Frankly, I don't think the City Council has ever been informed of the legal cases that have transpired and the facts. And they take the zoo's word for it that Billy is treated well, that he's in good mental and physical condition, and it would appear that it couldn't be further from the truth. One way or another, this has to come to the council floor and we've got to see if we can get that support. The fact is, he's been there way too long. He's had uh, much too much difficulty in the LA Zoo and it is time to move him to a sanctuary after all these years and let him be an elephant. At the Cambodia Wildlife Sanctuary, it's a big day for Kavan. His rehabilitation period is over, and he can finally move into his huge, newly created forest home. He walked a little tentatively at first out of his shelter and along the road, uh, taking a lot of time, far longer than I thought it would take. They'll never know just who you are, but they can't turn your bright star dark. Can't tame a wild heart, you are free. long haul to get here. Uh, nine months of work and it's just been a, a lovely to see him settle in so peaceful and calm. Uh, he here with us has totally become a different elephant. You see his, his, his real nature coming out, uh, the lack of stereotypic behaviors. Kawan totally, he changed attitude. He run, he play, he kick the dirt. He become like a young boy again. He has been swimming already in his big pool. He's calm and he exudes contentment. That's what we need to seek for captive elephants everywhere. Kawan and Billy, 
not different. I think if we give the chance for Billy, we will see another uh, beautiful and happy life. They'll never know just who you are, but they can't turn your bright star dark. Can't tame a wild heart.